One day, I was talking to a friend of mine about my hobby, and he said, it's very, very geeky, but it's very, very cool. It can only be radio controlled helicopters. Welcome to the heli shed. In part three, we're going to be turning this into this. Okay, let's start our build. Now, in part two, we put together the tail unit, but granted, my video um, recordings were screwed, and so as a result of that, we didn't actually see it being put together. But um, let's remind ourselves of what we've got. Rear blade grips, uh, we've got the rear drive shaft with the umbrella gear this side going through this plate and all the way into the rear blade grips. We've got this wonderful fandangled piece of engineering in the middle here called a pitch slider and the control rod um, and then at the uh, holding it all together if you like is the main drive shaft body or the gearbox body and inside there you can see that it has cutouts that's our rear tail unit ready to go now that's got to go into something and that goes into what you call a torque tube a torque tube comes in two parts the first part is a tube Dun -dun. Simple uh, steel tube, or aluminium tube, sorry, and this, a torque rod. A uh, torque rod, think of it a bit like a prop shaft, a long thin one, granted, but it's a prop shaft nonetheless. And we've got cutouts at the end there, we can see that cross section, um, which mates into, marriages into the umbrella gear at either end of the torque tube. This torque tube, however, can be the bane of your life without even knowing it. Let me explain. You can buy these brand new from many different outlets and it will come to you in its own special clear case. And the clear case will look something like this. And because it's in something like this, you will automatically think uh, that the tube is not bent that it's brand new and so on. And you'll be super excited from spending your hard earned money on your new torque tube. And um, it is unlikely that you'll get it out to check it. You'll get it out and you will expect um, it to be straight because you've paid for it. And my advice to you is this, don't expect, inspect. And it's very, very important that you inspect the torque tube. Time spent spending um, time, your, your valuable time spent uh, looking at this and um, making sure that it's straight is well worth it. Now, the only real way you're gonna make sure that this is straight is by rolling on a flat surface. Um, my advice to you is a piece of glass. If you roll it onto a piece of glass and it's not perfectly, um, not perfectly mated to the glass, this is bent. And a lot of new torque tubes that you will buy will be bent. That is the, the, the nature of them. Don't ask me why or how, but they will be. And if you have a bent torque tube, then when you put the torque rod in, it will not sit central to the torque rod and it will induce vibrations. Now let's go back to our torque rod. Now the torque rod uh, looks like this, and you'll notice um, that there are a couple of bearings uh, mounted on the, um, on the torque rod. Um, and these bearings are mounted at pretty much a third um, of the length either way. The measurements of these bearings, these radial bearings, are, is down there. Um, and these bearings are super glued into place. The inner race is super glued onto the torque uh, onto the torque rod. The type of super glue that you need to use is long lasting and thick, and it will cure in about a, a minute. And you can use special spray to cure it quickly. Uh, once it is cured, um, my advice is to still leave it for some time before you start exerting pressure on these bearings, um, just to make sure. You sh will know that it's been glued in place and that all is well, because you should be able to put your fingers either side of the outer races and move, and it should be nice and smooth. These rubber sheaths that come with the torque, uh, with the torque rod, and if it doesn't then uh, you can buy these separately, these rubber sheaths now simply slide over the top and capture the outer race uh, in this rubber sheath. And it's this rubber sheath that spaces out the torque rod inside the torque tube. Now that is the torque rod ready to go. All we need to do now is put this torque rod into the torque tube. 
We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a three question Q&A. Question one, this is about Loctite. This is sent to me on uh, uh, Facebook. And uh, the, question is, the question says, I understand completely why we should be using Loctite blue, but you've mentioned several times why we should not be using red. Why? Well, put simply, if you use Loctite red on a bolt or a screw or anything like that, it would be incredibly difficult to get out without shearing the head. It will be super tight. It will be very, very difficult. Um, trying to get a screw out that's been Loctited uh, with red is like trying to get a nun out of a cucumber field. They're going to stay, aren't they? Question two, quite a long one, this one. Um, I know this is a Bell 222 scale build project, i.e. Airwolf stroke civilian Airwolf, whatever that is. Uh, and it's aimed at the beginner. But I don't think it is necessary to go through a standard build as you are doing with a Trex, i.e. T-Rex, 700 and doing flight tests before getting into the 222 build. Can you not just go straight to the build, please? No. Question three. Uh, you seem to know what you are doing and saying. Undoubtedly, by a lot of experience building and flying. How long have you been flying? Uh, only since about 2015, um, bought myself a 230S version one, different one to that one, um, joined a local club, read a lot of forums, talked to a lot of people, um, like a sponge, soaked it all in, read a lot of documentation, um, watched a lot of YouTube videos and done as much preparation in understanding the mechanics and the electronics um, as I could. I'd say probably on a ratio of 10 to one, the one being the one hour's worth of flying was 10 hours worth of research and so on. And if you're technically minded, the mechanics and the electrical side of things is, you know, it's gonna tick all the boxes for you. Um, uh, ironically, I like uh, building and the electrics probably more than the flying, ironically, um, but the flying is, is really where it all comes together. So really to answer the question, not that long, no but I am the sort of person that threw myself into it 110% right at the very beginning. Is there such a thing as 110%? If 100% is the maximum you've got? I don't think there is. But if you know me, you know I do have 110%. Now that is the torque rod ready to go. All we need to do now is put this torque rod into the torque tube. Now, as part of preparation for that, we need to get some good silicon, uh, silicon based um, spray oil, um, and we need to spray inside of the torque tube to make sure that it's nice and oiled in there. My top tip is to spray it in there and let the torque tube, tube stand up on a microfiber cloth, you know, for 10 minutes, let it run on the inside. You don't need to absolutely soak it, but you do need to have some oil inside, which will help when it comes to reducing heat inside and actually enable, um, enable the appropriate lubrication. Now getting this torque rod inside the torque tube can sometimes be difficult. Personally, I've never had a problem with it, but apparently a lot of people do. Um, and when you buy a torque tube and a torque rod, sometimes it will come with a plastic uh, inner tube and it will look like this. Now this uh, little plastic tube here can help you when it comes to putting the torque rod inside the torque tube. If you don't, if it doesn't come with one of these, um, and you've got a 600 sized helicopter, then the rod, then the clear tube that comes with the torque rod for a 600 size is exactly the right width that you need. So let me give you a demonstration of putting that in. First of all, we've got our bearings; they've glued on. We've got our rubber sheaths either side. We simply take our no, I don't want to uh, buy some windows. Thank you very much, advert. Uh, we take our torque rod and we simply now pop that in and we slide that into the torque rod. We make sure that it's nice and level as it goes in. And once we've got that first rubber in, we can then uh, use the end to push some equal force down all the way through. And likewise with this one, and we can use this now to push the rubber and therefore exert equal force until the torque rod is all the way in. 
poke it the other side and there we go it's now seated um, I've never had a problem and to be honest with you I've always put it in without the uh, clear tube but a lot of people do like to use the clear tube now at the beginning I said to you it's very important to make sure that the torque tube was not bent and that the only real way of making sure that it wasn't bent was to roll it on glass um, and, and I still stick to that that is the only way don't go by your eye your eye can trick you um, but glass will not so roll it on a piece of glass or something you know to be deadly flat if the torque tube is bent when you put the torque rod inside the torque tube and you take a look at the end of the torque rod and you spin it it should be absolutely central and not move um, not wobble about on its axis now you can see this very clearly is wobbling about on the axis that's not because the torque rod is bent that's because the torque tube is bent i've put this one out a bit further so you can see that being um, so you can see that in motion now you imagine this going around at 1500 rpm then you can imagine also the massive amount of vibrations that will be induced as a result of that another top tip is to turn the torque uh, rod gently and then let go and if the torque rod moves on its own volition um, to the, the heaviest point if you like that is telling you this torque rod is uh, this torque tube is bent um, and you fit this onto your helicopter at a risk the only real way of making sure that it's not bent is one well the only two ways first roll it on glass that's three times i've said that and the second one is ditch this completely and buy a carbon one for an extra 15 quid you will not have a bent carbon uh, torque tube end of story but we're not going to do that we're going to stay with the aluminium torque tube um, there's no point going to the expense of a carbon one i've got one here one i prepared earlier which works perfectly let's do that test on it that we done earlier on I turn the torque rod and you can see there is no movement on that. If I let go, it doesn't roll down um, and I, I can spin that quite quickly and see that the, the torque rod is moving around around its central axis. There is no, uh, you know, uh, no moving other than circular, um, both sides. Um, and I can see that and I'm content with that. Um, so there we go that is now ready to go you'll notice i've put some tape in here and that is in preparation for the um for the brace that we're going to add to this but this torque tube and torque rod is now seated and ready to go we interrupt this broadcast to bring you three top tips top tip number one get yourself a decent set of hex drivers now these are a line's own version of them and they're perfectly good enough the top tip is this buy cheap buy twice and always buy hex drivers that are stainless steel particularly the heads if you don't then they'll simply just round out the screws as you undo them uh, for servicing and maintenance so hex drivers top tip number one hurrah top tip number two along with the hex drivers i.e making sure they're decent get yourself a decent set of tweezers yes who would have thought it two different types you've got the squeeze to hold and the squeeze to release how about that who would have thought different types of tweezers they'll come in handy i assure you get out there go on buy them now top tip number three Nearly all adults aged between 41 and 60 will have deteriorating close-up vision. They become presbyopic. So do yourself a favour. Get yourself an old magnifying glass lens like this. Super glue or tape it to your glasses like this. And you'll never have a problem. Or buy a handheld magnifying glass. Damn tape. But this torque tube and torque rod is now seated and ready to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make the tail 
uh, gear assembly uh, with the torque tube, very simply. And on the torque tube, you can see that there is a, uh, a cutout here um, drilled through. And on the other end of the torque tube, you can see that it's, uh, it's slightly longer. This is the one we want because we're going to be mounting the tail fin um, into that. And the tail fin uses this little, um, this little nipple, this nipple here, um, that's going to go into that hole. Uh, and it should go in um, like this. There we go, I'm content with that. Um, that is the rear tail fin now mounted. Um, the block is located correctly into the hole. We can see that there. There is no gaps in between. And I've complied with rule number two, general rules, which of course is construct it first and lock tight it second. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna lock tight it um, and then we'll look at the front drive. Now, before we have a, a look at the front drive and put that together, and we'll do that um, by speeding the camera up, I want to talk to you briefly about this, which is the rear tail um, brace, if you like. Very, very simple piece of construction. Um, lots of um, helpful videos out there on how to put this together. I'm not going to run you through this. It's very simple. You've got two uh, fiberglass rods um, and they've got capture points at either end. At this end, you've got a stabilizer. And um, at this end here, you've got um, a circular portion which goes over the torque tube uh, but it's in two halves uh, so my advice to you is not to follow the manual um, by putting this together piece by piece at a time um, and putting it on situ but to put it together like this very simply by screwing the center brace on um, and putting this together and making sure that it's a nice loose fit and this is so that you can then fit it straight onto the boom and keep it in place ready um, so that when you uh, complete the front drive that is the whole of the rear tail section ready to go. So here we are we've got the whole of the rear tail section together now we've got the torque tube of course the torque rod inside the stabilizer at the back or the rear tail fin of course our rear uh, gear our rear drive and so on um, and we've got our brace bar already attached you'll notice that when I put it on I made sure that uh, the torque tube was above uh, the brace bar and this is nice and loose on here and I've put some tape around the torque tube um, so that when I decide the position for this to go once so I've mounted it to the frame um, it's not going to you know make any damage to the uh, torque tube the side bolts uh, that you can see here and one the other side will pinch the torque tube as well as the two bolts that you do up um, here. So those two will cramp it onto the torque tube and the two bolts either side will pinch it. And this can cause damage to the torque tube, but pre pretty much a design flaw. Even the manual tells you to uh, use some abrasive, um, um, abrasive material and use tape, etc. So all I've done is I've put some masking, um, some electrical tape there so that when I position that it's not going to damage the torque tube and therefore you know have any other knock-on uh, problems with the torque rod alignment and so on right let's take a look at this front drive all right the front gearbox so a quick description and then i'll put it together and fast forward it so you haven't got to uh, spend hours watching it will be put together etc or, or 10 minutes or so um, at the back here we've got a couple of uh, a couple of halves for the actual uh, gearbox frame itself pretty much identical if I just turn that up except you can see on one side you've got captured area for bolts where screws will come in from the other side and get captured here so, um, so these captured areas for these nuts sorry um, which are nylock um, so in theory there's no need to um, uh, there's no need to lock tight those and on this side we've got a cutout uh, just here we've got a small uh, a small hole there and that is for this thicker bolt that comes with the kit um, and this thicker bolt here is the bolt that's going to go through there and locate the whole of the front drive 
um, on the torque tube to make sure it doesn't slip and it will be on that area that I showed you earlier on that's a you know a wide sort of cutout. Over here we've got the umbrella gear for the uh, main drive and I've taken both bearings off so that you can see me putting those on but when this comes either um, as a brand new kit for example they'll already be mounted unlikely that the bearings will be knackered but it's always a good thing to take them off if you can hold the outer race in your outer in your fingers put your middle finger on the inner race your thickest finger and you should be able to turn your inner finger without any grinding or uh, any any uh, any bumpiness and if there is get rid of those bearings and get some new ones you'll also notice that um, that we've got a spacer here um, but I've never actually had cause to use a spacer when putting this together and we'll see that um, shortly over here we've got the front drive and the auto rotation uh, the auto rotation cog slant fit from the 700x most of this mechanics is 700x um, and we'll see that when we put that together in the main frame build in part four. A couple of bearings here and here, um, of which the sizes are down below. And just in case I didn't do it for these two bearings, uh, those sizes are also down below. If you put those searches, if you put a search in for Google um, for that size and put ZZ on the end, then pretty much any bearings that you buy um, will be um, ABEC one or three. We know now that actually that will be more than suitable for your helicopter. So you're not channeled just to go to where it is that you bought the helicopter from. Finally, these locating studs here, which will then mer uh, merge both these two halves of the gearbox together. Right, let's put it together. There we go conclusion of part three we've put our um our rear gearbox that we put together in part two we've mated that to the torque tube we've learned about the torque tube the torque rod we've learned about the bearings on there and how it goes inside the torque tube how to make sure a torque tube is straight and what to do if it's not straight and what are your options if it's not straight we then looked at the front drive and identified the component parts we've put the front drive or the front gearbox together We've made sure that, that is meshed correctly with the torque rod and that there is no binding or friction whatsoever 
when we're turning the uh, front drive. The front drive is turning the torque rod. The torque rod is connected to the rear drive and that is indeed via the drive shaft turning the rear blade grip. So this is a completed end, um, a completed half of the helicopter. Um, and I'm very pleased with it. Remember, we don't need to, at this stage, nylock anything on the front drive, um, front gearbox. If this is your first 700 you've put together from a, a kit that you've bought um, or a second-hand helicopter that you've stripped down to make sure it's all right, and you're following this series and you've got this far and you've never done that before, then you know what? Good for you. And if you're following this series because I'm a bit of an idiot every now and then and come out with silly things, well, you know, welcome, enjoy it. Um, either way, let me know on my uh, comments below. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to subscribe to Wingflex, please do. Um, we do other things on there. Um, DCS World simulations and of course really controlled helicopters oh my god um, I'm looking forward to part 4 I hope you too uh, you, you, you are too uh, so join me in part 4 where we'll be putting the main frame together um, which is a precursor for part 5 where we will then do the electronics cool until part 4 then choppers legends and heli heads join me in the heli shed for part 4 Take care. Bye-bye.